Hey folks, it's Lev. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new and you see a pronouns, I wanted to share something today that I did and that I'm very proud of. And um, it's something that's been tormenting me for quite a while now. But by the time I, but when I release this video to public, I will be in a different place because I'm not ready to release this video to the public yet. So I'm filming it today but i'm not going to release it for a while so when you see this video it's not like recently filmed basically it'll be a while after it's filmed the lighting is a bit dim so i'm just experimenting because i'm on a retreat still and i'm just playing around the lights and i it looks grainy because my camera quality isn't the best but i'm just experimenting and this is what i'm going with so for those of you who don't know I am a trans man, so I was a sign for my birth and I socially transitioned to live as a man, changed my name and gender, legally recognized gender and this year I started hormone replacement therapy, testosterone, so in January of this year I started testosterone and I'm in the process of medically transitioning and something I've been experiencing for a very long time, even before I came out as trans or had the language had the language to put to how I feel was chest dysphoria. So chest dysphoria has always been like the worst type of dysphoria for me. I don't have bottom dysphoria. I do feel dysphoric I did feel dysphoric about my voice and everything before I started tea, but that's helped starting tea going on tea now, it's deepening and it's helping. The main thing was chest dysphoria. Even after I've lived as trans for a year um, chest dysphoria still really haunts me. Chest dysphoria still haunts me today. Like, it's not gone. But I want to share a story today um, about how I sort of took that to the next level, as in overcoming this dysphoria to the next level. Uh, ever since I came as a trans man and started living as a man, I have been, been I have been like avoiding water, not like drinking water. I mean, like avoiding like pools, beaches, water sports. Anything where I have to immerse myself in water and where I have to wear like swimwear basically because of my chest dysphoria. I've always been very self-conscious about how I look, my chest area, and I've always been scared of being outed as a trans man if I do like wear swimwear and like swim because it like it just makes it look bigger and then just like it makes it more obvious, I guess, to people that I'm not assigned female at birth. And then I was, back then, I was also scared of being out as a trans in general, not just as for it, but like people knowing about my identity. And that's, I've always, I like, I felt sad that like, I, I've been avoiding like water sports and swimming in the beach, like going into the water for so long, because I really enjoy bodyboarding. I quite, like like swimming even though i can't swim i like going on the water and stuff so i've been avoiding that for a very long time until today the fear of being out as trans tied into the possibility of being harassed attacked assaulted discriminated against being given transphobia because i'm trans like all of these things well, my, what made like me not wanting my dysphoria to out me even more. It's been a month and four years since I came out as trans and started living as a man. And today is the day I swam again. I am on this retreat. It's like a little vacation and there's a spa and an indoor pool it's very warm and cozy and I didn't want to miss out on this because I am on vacation and I'm like this is supposed to be enjoyable and I don't want to miss out on the spa because of my chest dysphoria so I did question it I'm like maybe you shouldn't do this um dysphoria but then in the end I basically said effort screw this I am going to enjoy myself in this spa and pool 
and I am not going to let this euphoria hold me back from this anymore. It has held me back from enjoying water activities for too long now. And today I'm just like, I can't, I, I am not doing this anymore. I can't do this anymore. It's not working for me anymore. I want to enjoy myself and be scared of being outed because of my chest is not the way I want to live my life anymore. And I thought, okay, if, if like people know I'm trans or like, the, no, I'm, I'm assigned female at birth, but I'm not actually a woman. Um, then I was like, I say, oh, hey, I'm trans. I'm trans, I'm assigned female at birth, that's why I have this, but I'm a man. And if they try to give me garbage for it, then, you know, debate me, debate me. Cause I, I figured at this point in my journey, having the self-confidence that I do now, I'm like, okay, debate me. It's better than me living in fear for so long and not being able to enjoy my life to the fullest because I am scared. What scares me more now is not living my truth and living the life I want over. I'm more scared of that than people possibly judging me and, you know, being transphobic. Just looking back on how far I've come on my journey from end of 2019, my dysphoria is really bad. I kept denying my identity. And I knew deep down that I was trans, but I didn't want to believe it because I was so scared from coming out to myself, to my, my close circle, navigating living as trans like how to navigate living as a trans man in a very cis head world um dealing with internalized transphobia how to learning how to love myself and not hate myself just because of all this transphobia i've internalized my whole life where being cisgender is seen as normal and anything other than that is abnormal that then learning how to manage gender dysphoria and then building self-confidence to live my truth and not care about what people think and then learning about how to deal with rejection because i'm trans and dealing with straight up direct transphobia to my face about me and i'm just like I've come so far along this journey and it's literally only been like a year and four months but so much has changed especially my mindset and perception towards all of this the way I think my automatic thoughts and responses to things it's just unreal to me how much has happened just in the past month, uh, past year and four months. Another thing is just being like confident in talking on camera, especially, and being vulnerable with the world about these experiences. Like this time last year, I couldn't even say I'm trans confidently to myself and my inner close circle of friends, let alone record a youtube video and put it out publicly to the world even if like no like a few people see it it's still being vulnerable to people i don't know and that scared me last year like this time last year you asked me to do this i would not be able to and that's why i didn't post much videos on my channel last year i made music during lockdown i posted that but like that's about it and I didn't post any of these videos because I was so insecure in myself. I was very insecure in myself and unconfident in my identity. I didn't like myself. And I was just a lot of baggage going on. And I just, it was just a lot for my head. Like I was already so insecure and vulnerable in my identity that I didn't want to put it out to the world and possibly get hurt even more by what people say to me because I was already so insecure without people saying things to me and then if I put myself out there and people say things to me 
it would have just made me feel worse and that's why I've avoided it and like now it's just a whole different story I've been through a lot of cycles of you know letting go of all parts of myself that are no longer helpful to me and you know rising from the ashes I think of it as like my old self just like burning into ashes parts of myself burning to ashes and I just arise from the ashes like a phoenix and that's just like a cycle I've been going through constant improvement constant learning taking feedback inputting feedback into my my operating system so that the loop can change course where it needs to and not be like input output input output input output the exact same 24 7 365 days a year i can't do that it just has to be input in to change it to improve the cycle and that's what i've been doing essentially it was honestly like this just this part of my identity and myself just the trans aspect and my trans identity impacted so many aspects of my life last year it's not just dysphoria and oh I'm scared of transphobia and I, I don't like myself it's not just that in of itself as I mentioned in the previous video my life is it's like a large interconnected web all of the domains are linked together last year I couldn't do much I couldn't film YouTube videos and I was insecure in trying to find a job and I didn't really you know go out there and meet new people and be confident talking to people and all of that because I was insecure in my own trans identity that in itself just screwed over so many aspects of my life and it wasn't until I started healing in this aspect domain of my life that I started seeing improvements in the other domains of my life as well including physical health it's all linked it's all linked all of it's linked now that I've overcome this hurdle um the avoiding swimming water activities because of my chest dysphoria if i am capable enough of you know feeling this i'm not saying i didn't experience chest dysphoria today i did i'm like chest dysphoria ew and then my mind was just sort of telling me part of my part of it actually a very soft voice given how confident i've got my identity a soft voice told me Maybe you shouldn't do this, like, just don't swim, you know, don't swim. And I mentioned in a previous video, like, recently, that we tend to be subconsciously drawn back to the familiar. And what was familiar for me is avoiding water sports because of dysphoria and possibility of being out as trans and being harassed. That was the story I've been, I've, that was the story. And that's the, what I've been telling myself. For all these years especially after I came out as trans and now I'm just like no I'm not listening to you I I see you I experience you you're here I acknowledge your presence however you are not going to stop me from enjoying what I want to do now that's what happened and I don't really say this to myself enough but I'm proud of myself for actually being able to capable being capable and executing it knowing it and then doing it knowing i have dysphoria but doing it anyway that to me is breaking barriers breaking barriers that have held me back for so long and i'm thinking like if i am capable of doing this what else can i do like what other possibilities are out there for me in my life if I can just stare at something I've been that's been like confronting me like confronting for a while and I look at it in the eye and I overcome it like it's just mind-blowing and it's it's so much growth for me a lot have this is a significant psychological growth for me it's 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 unreal honestly i i say that unreal because i don't know how else to describe it like you only know the feeling when something has held you back for so long 
and then you just overcome it and it's just like you're free from this psychological cage that you've been trapped in for so long that's what it feels like to me I've been trapped in a cage for so long and now I broke through the bars and flew off that's all the thoughts I had about this topic in particular for now um, again when you'll see this video on YouTube on my channel it's when I'm more ready to release this because right now it's just me documenting it from myself but when you'll see it it's when I'm ready to actually share this with the world and um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one